Hello my tricks. In the previous video we spoke about naming straight chain alkanes like this one over here. For example this one has five carbons so we know that its name, its IUPAC name is pentane. Pent because it's got five carbons in its main chain, ane because it's an alkane. In this video I'm going to show you how to name alkanes when they have branches or substituents like these over here. Let's go. Now the first thing you need to understand about branched alkanes is that they'll have branches or substituents. If you see the word substituents, it's basically a fancy, fancy word for a branch. What we're going to be focusing on in this video are substituents that are called alkyl groups. The name of this branch will always end in YL because the word alkyl ends in YL. Now you might be thinking, but ma'am, what is an alkyl group? Well, it's very simple. Alkyl groups are branches. So branches, first of all, they are branches or substituents, and they have carbons and hydrogens in their branches. So let's take a look at what I mean by this. If I have a branch with one carbon, this is an alkyl group because I've got carbons and hydrogens, and this, because it has one carbon, is a methyl branch. If I have two carbons in my branch, it's an ethyl branch. If I have three carbons in my branch, it's a propyl branch. Now these meth, eth, and prop should ring a bell from the previous lesson that I did on naming alkanes. Meth means one carbon. Eth means two carbons. Prop means three carbons. But it's ending in YL because it's a branch, it's an alkyl group. So looking at these alkanes that we mentioned in the end of the previous video, we can see that the alkane in the middle over here this again, this one that I'm squiggling on, that is the main chain. Then we can see once we identify the main chain that this over here that I've circled, that is a branch. And in particular, it is a alkyl group. Why is it an alkyl group, ma'am? How do you know it's an alkyl group? It is an alkyl group because it contains carbon and hydrogen. Now, how many carbons are in this branch? Take a look you can see that that branch has one carbon. So we know that because it has one carbon in that branch, it is a methyl branch. If it had two carbons, it would have been an ethyl branch. We will do examples like this. Let's carry on. So I have mentioned this before. When we name organic compounds, we use the IUPAC or IUPAC system. It's basically the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Don't worry about knowing that acronym or that basically the long version. You can call it IUPAC or IUPAC system. And it's basically used internationally across the world. And this is so chemists across the world can recognize a compound when they read the name. And it's the same across the globe. So. There are rules when it comes to naming organic compounds, and in particular, naming alkanes and so on. Now, grade 12s, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these rules on the screen. I'm going to move my face now. You can take them down or screenshot them or something, but the best way for you to understand these rules is for me to do examples. All right. So here, here's the first five rules when it comes to naming organic compounds, in this case, naming alkanes. And here's rule six, seven, and eight. Now I'm going to do an example with you guys, and I want you to see how this works. If you need to refer back to the rules as I'm doing the example, go ahead. But like I said, it makes so much more sense as I do examples. Now, how would you name this alkane if this over here did not exist? Let's pretend that I took that away and I just focused on this alkane. Let's pretend that there was an H in this place instead. How many carbons are in this main chain? Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you would say, ma'am, there's six carbons, so this is hexane, right? Hexane because six carbons and ane because it's an alkane. That is correct. But now, what happens if I add in that branch? Remember, we need to get to know how to name alkanes when there's branches. Let's have a look. If we have a look at this organic compound now, we can see that the main chain, and guys, when I say main chain, I mean the longest continuous carbon chain, has six carbons. So again, six meaning hexane, but this is a big but. We have a branch on this carbon, on this compound. If we look, we can see that this is the branch. 
Now I need you to think, looking at this branch, how many carbons are in this branch? One carbon. So what is this branch's name? It is a methyl branch. So you might be thinking, okay, cool. So the name is methylhexane. Almost. Remember, in the name, you need to tell me exactly what's going on with this compound. We need to indicate the position of the branch. So what I mean by this is, if you look at the longest chain over here, on what carbon is my methyl branch? Well, what we do is we number the carbons in the main chain to give the branch the lowest possible number. So let's, let's take a look. If I number the carbons in the main chain from left to right, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On what carbon is my methyl branch? It's on carbon 2. If I had to number the main chain the other way, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now my carbon, my methyl branch would be on carbon 5. Obviously 2 is lower than 5. So we're going to stick with our top way of naming it from left to right. Remember, the rule is you're always going to prioritize the branches. We want to make the branches have the lowest number. So my branch is on carbon two. It's a methyl branch. My main chain is six carbons, so it's hexane. So how do I name this thing? It's going to be two dash methyl hexane. Now, very important. Have I included everything in the name? Yes. I told everyone that the main chain is six carbons. I told everyone that it's an alkane because it ends in ane. Methyl is this group over here. This is a methyl group. It's got one carbon. And the methyl group is on carbon number two. When it comes to the punctuation, I have a slide coming up on this, but basically dashes. So over here we have a dash. Dashes need to separate numbers and letters. Then we use commas to separate numbers and numbers. I have an example coming up of that. But let's just take a look at this before I go on to more complex examples. The IUPAC or IUPAC system uses three parts. So let's consider our example that we just did. In our example, we had 2-methylhexane. The name consists of three parts. Our prefix, and we know prefix comes before. Pre is before. A little bit of English, um, prefix and suffix should ring a bell. In my name, the prefix is the position and the name of the branches or the substituents. Remember, substituent is a fancy name for branches. So, two methyl. That's my prefix, that's my position and name of branches. Then we've got my stem. That's going to be the number of carbon atoms in the main chain. So remember, hex. There were six carbons in the main chain. And then the suffix comes at the end. That tells me the homologous series. So ane, because it's an alkane. There we go. 2-methylhexane. And all of our names, well, across our homologous series, will look like that. Our branches and the position of the branches will come first. The number of carbons in the main chain will come in the middle. And the homologous series, so if it's an alkane, if it's an alkene for ene, if it's an alcohol, so ol, that'll come at the end. I hope that helps. In the next video, we're going to go over a little bit more complicated examples.